Hi everyone, welcome to my video on Retro Arch. Uh, this one is a little bit more advanced. I did one originally, uh, kind of a beginner's guide to get us from what you can see on the screen here, the basic install. You know, when you first install Retro Arch, this is what you get, the very basic menu. Uh, and in the previous menu, we went from that to this. So this is uh, changing the menu interface you know, slightly to a different, different layout, adding all the artwork, adding all the playlists. <clears throat> and that's, like I say, that's in the in my beginner's uh, guide. So yeah, check that out if you haven't. Um, so what we're going to do now is, is take you know, this this point we've got here, take it on the stage further. So in here we've added um, artwork, etc., to the actual user interface. So it looks all nice and pretty when you when you browse through your games. The next step is to add some artwork um, known as overlays or bezels uh, to the actual in-game play. So when, when you're playing, so um, so pretty much when when you play a game, um, you can obviously you can have it full screen. Uh, like you know, 16 by 9 on, on most monitors, uh, um, or, or you can have it run the original ratio, which a lot of people like to do, uh, more like 4 by 3, so more of a square picture that you had on the old sort of, you know, the old um, big CRT TVs, that kind of stuff in the day when, when a lot of these systems were around. So people like to, to run it, you know, in the in the correct ratio, I guess. Um, which what happens there, it leaves some, some big borders down down each side of the screen. So. Um, bezel's been around quite a while, like I say, in Retro Arch, they are referred to as overlays. Um, so basically, we, you can set them up in here, you can either set, you know, one generic one for everything, or you can set them per system, per, you know, per core, or you can set them per game. Uh, there is a project online that's worth checking out called the Bezel Project, and they're putting together, well, they're having it for quite a while now, putting together bezels for different systems and different games. So you know, if you go on there and integrate that with RetroArch, you, you, know, you end up getting you know per game bezels, which is quite cool. And they, they use another other front end as well. Um, so yeah, so let's go through and quickly just to show you how to set them up and do a bit of tweaking if you need to. So what you find is um, well, to actually set them up, the easiest way to do it is to launch a game from the particular system you want to want to set up, or if you're going to set it up. You know, one one simple generic overlay for everything. Still launch a game, and then you come back into the menu to change it. So, you just need to check before you do that um, that you can get to the quick menu um, within RetroArch while you're playing a game. So this is the this is the, um, like I say when you're playing, you sit in a minute, but you, you hit the button and you it's kind of like the pause menu. So you get to either continue, quit the game, um, change some settings, um, take a screenshot, all that kind of stuff. So what there is, is if we go down to input, under settings, there's a hotkey, oh, I went past it, sorry. There's a hotkey to actually bring up the menu, and it's not always set by default. I think in, in, in more recent versions it is, but just double check. So if you, under input, you scroll down to hotkeys. See, so mine's set to none at the moment, so menu toggle is, is what we're looking for. So I, you can set, you know, there's all these different predefined ones I tend to go for start and select so if you're playing with a, a controller either you know if you're on Windows or Android or whatever you're running this on um, you hit start and select together and it'll grab the in-game menu obviously at the moment I'm on a PC here so F1 does the same thing so I'll be using F1 for this but if I was using a controller I, I'd use start and select just make sure you got that selected first now come back out um, go and run a game I tend to use for some reason, I don't know why, I tend to use Mega Drive from <laughs> a couple of demos I've done already. So let's go to Mega Drive or Genesis, depending on where in the world you are. So if we launch Aladdin, we'll run this. I'll get this other version. And see, I've been playing before, I've installed this other this other uh, bezel. But anyway, what I'll do, I'll hit F1. So this is the in game menu I was talking about, where you can where you resume, restart, close, take a screenshot, save your state, load your state, etc. So once you've got this running, so basically the game's running in the background, if we go back and go all the way back to the settings menu, what we want to find is scroll down the settings menu and go to on screen display, on screen overlay, uh, and then you can see it's turned on or turned off. So obviously, from the Genesis, I've already got it turned on, but when you come to it, it'll probably be like this. So you turn it on, uh, there's an option here 
which is around um, hiding the overlay while in the menu. So as you can see, you can't see it at the moment on screen. Uh, but if I turn it off, you can see it appear. So that's a good way of going through and picking one that you like, rather than having to go into a game and see what it looks like and then drop them out, choose another one. You can you can pick it from in here without having to go in that game. So basically, you scroll down to the overlay preset. So I've got called Genesis. Um, so if I come back up, well, so there's a folder here. If I come back to the top level, you can see at the top here, within the RetroArch folder, there's a folder called Overlays, which you can see here. So RetroArch, you've got a folder called Overlays. So you've got all the default ones in here. Um, I look in Borders. Um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch in here already. I've been through, and I've actually found a few more online, which I've put into this folder here. And, I, <coughs> and what I'll do is, is I'll put a copy of this on my Google Drive and put a link in the description if you want to grab this as well. So if you go in here, um, I've got a few more sort of uh, more generic ones here. Uh, this folder called More, there's a, there's a whole bunch more, and a lot of these are kind of TV ones. So they're kind of generic if you want to just use a, a generic image um, like a t of a TV. So a lot, you'll see they're made up of two files. Each one's got a, a PNG, which is the basically the image itself, and it's PNG because it has to support transparency. So basically you've got the transparent window in the middle of the image so you can see the game through it. Uh, and then the CFG file is just a basic text file which a couple of lines of information about the about the bezel tells it the name of the image file to use, whether they're trying to full screen or not, and a few other options you can put in there, but they're normally quite basic. So I'll just double click on this one, you can see you see this is the actual sort of generic TV type uh, bezel. It's got the side and it's got a little bit of a frame across the top and bottom as well. So with a slight curve, making it feel more like a an old old style TV. And then just for completeness, CFG. Like I say, it's just this one's actually four lines, not much in there. Number of lays one. That's the image file to load. Is it full screen? Yes. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what that one does, but we can ignore that. That's pretty much. The, like I say, you shouldn't have to play, play with the config file at all. So, you know, as long as you've got a CFG and a PNG, and it's a CFG that you pick within RetroArch. So anyway, that's the. Uh, that's where they are. So I'll just do. Um, it's from the built one. It's quite a nice one from the Mega Drive called Animated. So we're actually playing the actual buttons animate. And this, I think it looks a bit nicer as well. Like I said, when you're in game and you, and you press the buttons on your controller, these buttons will actually light up and move, <laughs> which is quite cool. But anyway, we pick that for now, and that's it. That's it done. And then the other thing is the, the opacity. I've got mine turned up to one. And I think what you, what you find by default is that it's set to something like 70 or 75. Uh, if I just set it to that, you can see it goes this transparent, which you may or may not want, but in my mind, you probably don't, because you know you might see a bit of the game that's not quite lined up, so you know behind it. So what I tend to do is go is basically pick the image I want, then go down to the next option and set this all, all the way to to one, which means no transparency, it's a solid image. So personal preference, but yeah, up to you. So like I said, I've got it turned on so I can see it in the menu. If I turn it off, it goes away. So that's basically it's set. It's easy as that. You come into turn on overlays, pick the image you want, and then also I set the, the opacity to, to one. And that's it done. So we can go and try that. If we go back. And then rather than going all the way back to the game, if we just go left to the main menu, you see you've got, because you've got a game running, quick menu is available here. So back in the quick menu, click resume, and now we can see the uh, see the game running but as you can probably tell it's not quite centered so obviously this depends on your your video setup your screen layer all that kind of stuff um, I'm running in a window here so that might be affecting it so if what I do if I if I pause the game there you can see the game's running and it doesn't quite line up so if you do come across this it's quite easy to fix again so I say you pause it and it's good to pause it on a screen like this that's quite quite easy to see. So what you need to do is go go back to settings, go to video, and then you've got scaling. Uh, so now in here, I, I've been playing this already before, but your aspect ratio would probably be set something like call provided. You can see I changed the hoodie, it's, uh, it's actually flipped back. So um, yeah, mine's my set to call provided, and you'll probably find it's okay. You probably find it. Oh, well, I was playing with that before, so I just double check what that looks like. Actually, go out to quick menu, resume, and you can see that actually looks pretty good. So, I mean, hopefully you won't have any issues. But if you're playing, 
things like arcade games, um, they tend to have varying different um, screen size and screen ratios, and some of those might be out. Some of the standard consoles like this, like the Genesis and a lot of home consoles, all have standard output size, so that it's probably okay. But if you do find you need to change the screen, like I said, I'll just show you, show you that quickly, which is what I was about to do. So if I go back to the settings menu, I can say I just go into on screen display overlay. And if I turn off the option to hide while in menu, it will bring it up. So now you can see you can see where it is. In my case, it's, it's pretty well aligned, but let's imagine it's not for you. So come back, being settings, go back up to uh, video where we were a minute ago in the scaling. So, like I say, when mine call provided is pretty good. What you can do, you can change this to have a different ratio. So if you want to, you know, force everything to be widescreen, uh, 16 by 9, you can do that, or 4 by 3. Or if you've got a, a screen or device that's got a slightly different aspect ratio, maybe a tablet or a phone or something that's got a different um, screen ratio, you can you can set it in here. Or the other option to do is custom. So once you're in custom, you've got then these four options here. Um, so the integer scale, if you turn that on, it basically means you basically go up in stages. So like you know, 1920, 1280, 960, 640. Doesn't kind of like standard scale, which might might get you near to where you want. And the same for the height. You can see how we're changing the game screen up and down, basically. Um, but if we turn that off, we can now do fully custom. So obviously the first one, let's say, is the kind of moving it left to right. So it's quite easy to do, just like, I guess, if you've done it for anything else. Just set the, the X position, which is obviously the horizontal. And bring it all the way across. So you can just see here how well you can make it out, but you can see the, just the edge of the purple screen there. So you want to bring that to the left, just make sure it's just touching there. That's great. Now we go down to the Y position, which obviously is up and down, so we just bring it down. Now you can probably just about see the purple here. You can see the edge of the screen. So let's bring that up, just it touches the top. And then this is the width, so we make it a little bit wider. And obviously as you see the left hand side stays where it is, it's the right hand side that Increases across, so just that that will do. Also, I'm doing this quite quickly. It's going to be 100% perfect, but just to give you the idea. So let's bring the height up. Just to see the edge of the screen. There it is. So let's go down, and we we'll call it there. So that's it done. So now, now I come back out, back out, back to quick menu, resume the game, and there we go. Looks pretty good. So that's set it all up. That's set the bezel. So now, when you save it, we're going to save what they call an override. So we hit F1 again, or start and select on the controller. And in the quick menu, you go to the, near the bottom, you've got overrides. So go into here. So this is where you've got the option how you want to save it. So at the very bottom, you've got um, it's basically per game. So if I hit this button, it will save a config, especially for Aladdin on the Mega Drive. So this bit bezel and this screen size will only apply when you run this game, which you might want to do. You might have some custom, uh, you know, custom bezel, which is just for Aladdin, and you might want to do that for all your games. But <laughs> how many games you got it might take a while. Um, the other two options are kind of like system specific, but in slightly different variations. So core override, we'll save it specifically for the core we're running. So when if you load this core, you about to see it's, it's Genesis Plus GX. These these settings will apply, and you'll get this bezel, and you get this screen size, which is okay in some cases. But in this case, this isn't great because this core actually supports the Mega Drive, the Master System, the Game Gear, and maybe one other. And um, so basically, the, the core supports multiple systems. So you should that you know fire, if you did this option, and then you fired up a Master System game or a Game Gear game, you'd get a Genesis bezel which might look slightly odd. I mean, that might not bother you, but it might look a little bit odd. So, I mean, obviously, if you're doing a more of a generic, just like a TV screen bezel, that's probably fine. 
But if you want to set up a bezel per system, the best thing that I find is to do um, per directory. So it basically means that if you load any games, any ROMs or content from a particular folder, this con this this config will apply. And you know, hopefully, most of you or well, all of you should have all your games in their own folders. It doesn't matter where you've got them on your system, you know, what drive letter or where, you know, what subfolder they're in. But as long as all your Genesis or Mega Drive games are in one folder, all your Master System in another folder, NES in another, Amiga in another, you know, on and on. As long as they're in a separate folder, then this option works really well. So that means, basically, whenever I run a Mega Drive game, it's always going to load this config for me. So I hit enter on that and it will say, now it save the config. Um, easy as that really. Um, so now if we go back, actually I can just close that content now. Uh, and that's it. So if I ran, if I ran a di different system, so let's just try it, let's do the my system, Aladdin. See, it's applying different config, so obviously in the past I've added this sort of generic generic site bezel TV one but it's loading up uh, and we can confirm that if we just go back to from here all of that settings and go to the exact same place on screen display on screen overlay and you see I've got gamer TV selected which is the one I showed earlier which is the generic TV so yeah you can see so if I go back and just close that now if I go back to Mega Drive again and let's pick a different Mega Drive game while still coming from the same folder. Now this should see now because it's the first time I've run it, it's asked me which which core to use. Because when you put some in my previous video, when you um, create a playlist, you can choose at that point to tell it which core to use. Obviously I haven't in this case. So it's for the first time it's nice, okay, which core do you want to use with these games? And here's what I was saying about the uh, about the core. So the Genesis Plus GX that I was using does Master System, Game Gear, Mega Drive, and Mega CD, which is why it's best to save the per folder option, not per core option. So I'll pick the same core. That's set. Now we can hit run, and there you go. Because it's coming from that folder. It's uh, loading the bezel, loading the config. Obviously, you can see the screen size changes with my uh, when I re resize it in the window. So that's obviously why I had to, to play with the um, the various ratio. So um, yeah, that's it. That's just basically prove it's working. So then, obviously, it's up to you whether you want to go back and you want to set. Obviously, I've got quite a few playlists here, quite a few systems. Like I say, you can go into each one, set a bezel for each one. Completely up to you. Or what you might want to do initially is just. Uh, and just set a generic uh, generic overlay for all systems. Now if you want to do that, do that without a game running. So at the moment I've got no game running. Um, so now if I go back to settings and I do the same thing, I won't go through the whole process, but if I go to on-screen display, okay, so I've turned it on and I've got the gaming TV one set, which like I said before was that generic TV screen. And so because I've set this with no game running, this is almost default config. So if I run any system now, it will bring up, it will have that bezel basically, except if I run the game out of the Mega Drive folder, it knows that I've got an, o, you know, an override profile, well, sorry, override config for that folder to apply a different bezel. So that's how it, work, that's how it works. So if you haven't got a game running and you change the config, that's your default or generic config that applies to all games. If you then want to do an override and set a different config, be it screen size or um, or a bezel or um, something else um, another screen effect you know um, when you, you change kind of the, uh, the effect to an old TV or put scan lines on that kind of stuff you want to put effect like that on um, then yeah it will apply to everything but if you want to do it for a specific system you say you, you change it while a game is running from that, you know while you've got that core loaded basically make the changes and then save it as an override. So that's kind of how the config works, I guess as a sort of a basic level, you have your default config, 
and then you can set a per system or per game config which you know, it can get quite complex i think it's one of the things like i've mentioned in the video that i think retroarch can you know um put people off a little bit people you're probably you know people that are quite techy that like you know fiddling and setting up the perfect setting and getting everything right you know love it other people that are sort of beginners and le less technical knowledge might little, be a little bit scared of it like you know it might be a bit daunting for them because like you can see you know there's, there's so many options to do stuff in here we're just in the on-screen on-screen menu in here there's you know change all the settings and the scale whether it's in portrait or landscape mode of the actual bezel itself so yeah there's you know, there's lots and lots but like I say, once you, if you just remember Scott, the basics, you know, if I haven't got a game running or a core loaded, then I make a change. I'm making a change to the default config. If I've got a game running and I've paused it, and I then want to make a change, I can then set an override for that specific game or that specific core. So yeah, that that's it. That's like a whistle top store of, of overlays. Like I say, you can go and find your own online if you want to you know, find some weird and wacky ones. You can even make your own. But just take take one of the pre-existing ones, open the PNG in a paint program and basically you know, edit it and you know you can put your own logo on it or something, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, so okay, I found a few few more online. There's some that come with RetroArch themselves, uh, but I found a few more online which I'll put in the description, put a link to my Google Drive and you guys can grab that and add it. All, so all you need to do is download it and drop it into your overlays folder within, uh, within RetroArch. And yeah, that's it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Please like the video, please subscribe, um, and I'll be making plenty more of these videos. There's probably a few more to come on, on RetroArch on different different areas, um, and then other sort of general tech type tips and hints and that kind of stuff. And I've got a whole bunch of kind of RetroArch, like retro, retro gaming type stuff uh, on the channel already, so check that out. But yeah, thanks for watching, and see you soon.